Hi, I'm David Kramer. I'm professor here at the Jewish Theological Seminary and director of the library, and we are here in our rare book room. Our Geniza collection, comprised of approximately 35,000 fragments, uh, is a collection that was gathered first in the early 1890s by a uh, world traveler, a very important lawyer and business person by the name of Elkin Nathan Adler. Uh, when it was first discovered, uh, it was fragments that looked very much the way the fragments still kept in this box uh, did and do. Uh, but uh, as these works were isolated and treated, uh, we discovered amongst our items here in the collection at the Jewish Theological Seminary letters, two and perhaps three, uh, from the well-known medieval Jewish poet, author, philosopher, uh, Judah Halevi. Uh, we are, of course, thrilled to have uh, these documents and to make them available to scholars and writers. And based upon these letters, we've been able to recover very important details uh, from the life of Rabbi Judah Halevi. Uh, David is, is absolutely right. The Cairo Gneza has shed uh, an enormous amount of light on Yehuda Halevi, especially on his last year. Halevi, as an old man in the year 1140, set out from Spain to Palestine, to the land of Israel, with the intention of settling there, which was an unheard of thing to do in his age. And uh, on the way, he passed through Egypt, which was necessary because there were no direct uh, ships sailing from Spain to Palestine. You had to go through Egyptian ports. And Halevi, while he was in Egypt, left, uh, wrote poetry from Egypt, wrote letters um, in Egypt and to friends and acquaintances in Egypt that were preserved. So we know that he reached Egypt from Spain. But until the discovery and the uh, decipherment of material from the Cairo Geniza, it was not clear at all whether Halevi had ever left Egypt for Palestine, had ever gotten to Palestine, and the whole thing was one great mystery. What's interesting is that even whether this is a Halevi letter or not, which there is dispute of, it's actually in some ways more interesting if it's not, because you've got the same thing. Yeah. But right? that's not peculiar to Halevi, though. No. Right? So what's no, your... So uh, no means. What? They almost always make use of the margin. If, they, if, if, if a guy starts writing here and he writes straight down the page like a normal human being would do and leaves a margin, well, maybe if he's got a lot to write, maybe he won't leave the margin. He'll come all the way down to the bottom. Where's there blank space left on the side? Mm -hmm. So he'll begin writing here and he'll right. fill in here. So as, here. As he was, yeah. but, but to do that, but as, as he was going down, he had to indent each line. What I'm <laughs> saying here so. is that why did he indent more and more as he wrote? That's the question. Unless and it was to save himself the space. Right? I like to imagine that he's left-handed and he's right. pulling and the pen toward him this way. This is a typical <laughs> way that left-handed people write. <laughs> That's good. What this does make clear, it's actually whatever the reason for this, you know, the unique writing here on an angle, it makes clear how valuable these writing materials are, because yeah. of course you couldn't possibly afford The paper was more expensive than it is for us. Right. I mean, look what you deal with when you try to read this stuff. First of all, the writing is virtually illegible. It looks like Arabic, and they, yeah, they, they, run, they, mm -hmm. they run the letters together just as four There are words here that I would swear were Arabic. Words. Yeah? Yeah, I know. I've shown it to students mm -hmm. and said, look how, talk about acculturation. Even yeah. the style of writing is yeah, acculturated. Sure. Yeah. Then, ya, o, Mem, Vav, that's clear. Lamed, nothing. Okay, now, because you've read a lot of these letters, you know that it's Yama Ulaya wa Sayyidi. Mm -hmm. So you put it, when you print it, you put it in brackets, because mm -hmm. that's a standard right. opening formula. Right. You have reason to believe that right. that's what it is. Right. But here you're lucky. The hole is where you can reasonably guess. Most times the hole is where you can't guess, yeah. like this, or where that name was. I mean, expressions of praise for the recipient and of self-deprecation for the writer are very elaborate and they're obligatory. Right. It's an <laughs> obligatory right. part of the rhetoric. So just as you can't begin a letter in English without saying, dear so-and-so, and you're sincerely, lines and lines and lines of this stuff. Some governments had, had, had mail couriers. Services? Not mm -hmm. for themselves, for government right. purposes, mm -hmm. and then you could yeah. get onto it once right. they were going. Right. But most Jewish business letters, we believe, were carried by travelers, by mm -hmm. business travelers. Right. Given, given the uh, technologies of sending, it's actually remarkable how many 
arrived at their targets, at their intended But that's also why we have so many doublets, because mm -hmm. they often wrote two letters on the same subject and yes. sent them yes. on sent successive with days with mm -hmm. two different, mm -hmm. right. if, 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 yes. if, the, if there were enough people traveling, right. Right. because things a lot of times didn't get where they were going, mm -hmm. and that's how mm -hmm. they covered themselves. Mm -hmm. Today, because of the Geniza, and because of finds, not only of letters written by Halevi himself, but of letters written to and by friends of his that refer to him and that tell about him, we know a great deal about his last year in Egypt. We know the exact date on which he arrived in Egypt, in, in the port of Alexandria in September 1040. We know the exact date on which he sailed from Egypt to Palestine, which I believe was May 14th, 1141. We have a letter written by someone shortly after seeing him off on a board ship. Uh, so we know that he left Egypt for Palestine. Uh, then his traces disappear again, but there are actually several letters in the, in the Gniza that tell us that he died the, same, the, the summer of the same year uh, that he left in, uh, for Palestine in the, in the spring of. So we, we know that he sailed to Palestine, and we know that he died there that summer. And, uh, this is all extremely valuable and interesting information, and it's information we know of because of the Geniza discoveries.